So straw clay is always used in some sort of form, unless you are maybe using it in an attic space um, and tossing it in um, up there. But usually you're packing it in a form and it gets dense once it's in the form. But when you mix it, you want it really nice and uh, light and fluffy. So, okay, so we've got this. And what I, what I made here is a really watery slip because I just want to lightly coat this. One thing I could do to this to even make it um, even lighter is to make sure I screened it. If I had a window screen over a wheelbarrow, I'd pour it through there and I'd get rid of all the heavy chunks. Then I'd have just this, just the nice slip. So, just put a little bit on. So literally tossing like salad dressing. And you can start to see. The more insulation you want, the more careful you want to be in how you do this so that you don't put too much clay in there and and um, and cut your insulation. Why don't you use your hands? Well, uh, what I'm showing you is how you'd mix bigger batches. Okay. And then I showed you that picture of that big machine that Alfred von Bachmeyer developed. Um, that would be even bigger. And then certainly you can definitely use your hands too. Yeah. But really all I'm trying to do is get to a point that it's all all coated just like this. You're trying to take that goldenness away. Yeah. And so the, the rule in if you want a really insulated wall would be, you know, less clay slip and just more mixing. So I probably don't need to add any more clay slip. I just need to keep mixing it. You were doing a whole house with this forever. Yeah, and you could, um, you, you know, that's where some sort of mixing machine would really come in handy. Because this is going to pack down. Yeah, OK. But that's getting pretty good. You can see if you picked up some of this, you look through it and you go, oh, yeah. You know, I'm not seeing any shiny golden, golden surfaces anymore. And that's enough to have it pack and hold firm once it dries. That's all you need. So then all you do with that is you take it and you actually make some bundles. And you can tuck those down in here. It's good to twist it like that, like you're doing. Can I take a top of this off? And we could. We could. Yeah. Are you compacting it by no. twisting it like that? Yeah. Now, um, this form has these little two bys in here, or one bys. And that's so that when this, this whole thing is filled and it dries and shrinks just a little bit, it doesn't just <coughs> fall out no, as a whole panel. It's going to lock in and around these. Now, this is a little wide. This is really more for teaching. Um, this is just a little bit wide to just have this. So sometimes what we'll do is drill holes and put willow every once in a while across. Once you've filled to a certain level, put some willow and stuff so that you have some, like a, a willow stick, so that you have a little bit more resistance to the, the panel moving, you know, coming out. The example how can do it? The, the little frame that I had in the classroom, that little sample, it had some willow in there if you looked at the top of it. You could see the last piece in there. Do you ever pack this too tightly so that you don't have that like, air kind of? You probably could pack it to where you had less insulation than you were hoping for, but you definitely want it pretty firm because that's where you get the strength you know, of the wall. So 
that's the basic idea. And then um, you can use things like this to come in, you know, and really pack it and make sure that you get, you know, get it tight up and around this um, this key this keyboard. So you fill that and keep going. 